with us. Joining me now on the phone is Congressman Al Green, Democrat of, te uh, of Texas. Uh, and Congressman, thank you very much. We appreciate you calling in tonight. And, and we hope you're healing after your abdominal surgery. It, it was your vote this week in the House, just after that operation, that narrowly blocked the GOP's attempt to impeach Homeland Security Secretary. Even your Democratic colleagues didn't expect you to make the vote. But now House Republican leadership has scheduled another impeachment vote for Tuesday evening. How do you feel about Republicans saying they're going to try and do this all over again? Well, thank you for having me, Reverend. And please excuse my raspy voice. I did have a tube inserted into my stomach through my throat. And I would also say it's an honor to be with you. And it has new meaning after my hospital visit. So thank you again. Uh, Reverend, uh, I'm disappointed to see this continue. Secretary Mayorkas is a good, decent man who's done good, decent things with the laws that are available to him. The Congress of the United States has neglected to update the laws so that we can co contend with the circumstances that we have presently. And until we do this, we're going to see people congregating at the border and trying to make their way in, escaping persecution. I believe he has done the best that he can, given the laws that we've given him. Now, now Republicans are trying to impeach uh, Secretary Mayorkas again, even as they abandoned work on an immigration bill that would have addressed many of their concerns at the border by their own admission. They're giving up at the behest of their likely presidential nominee, Donald Trump. What's at stake as Republicans play politics with this issue, Congressman Green? Reverend, the border is a serious issue. And it brings with it issues associated with places south of the border. There really has to be an effort to get to the root cause of this. But they're not interested in getting to the root cause. The Republicans are currently putting the politics of this next election above the needs of people. And that will continue. They will put the politics above the needs of people. That bill that they came up with in the Senate is a bill that it would have been difficult for me to support, but I would have because President Biden is holding his nose and supporting it, too. There was a lot of capitulation in that bill. Nothing in there for the dreamers, the dockers, uh, students and children. We have a duty now to do something about the border. But I will say this. The world can show you the truth, but no one can force you to accept it. And there are people who just won't accept the fact that Republicans are playing politics with the border and playing politics with the lives of people. I'm going to stand with the president and we'll do something given the opportunity. Now, before I let you go, I have to ask you about former President Trump. The Supreme Court held a hearing this week in his Colorado ba a ballot case, and they are expected to take up his claim about absolute immunity. These are just a few of the legal proceedings involving Trump moving through various courts right now. You were the first to call for Trump's impeachment all the way back in 2017. What are your thoughts about where we are today? I'm of the opinion that we have found ourselves now and, and will continue to find ourselves dealing with people who are putting lunacy into practice. It is just unbelievable that there's a desire to appeal a decision that would give the president absolute power. No one's above the law in this country. The president can't be above the law. So we got to make sure that uh, we have the ability to take people out of office, but not to play politics with the process of taking people out of office. I would add this if I may close, Reverend. Something has escaped us, and it is this. The paradigm has shifted for why people are elected to office. Republicans have made it clear to us that they're going to elect a person who will do what they say, get the job done. We have a president who's doing exactly that, and we've got to recognize that paradigm shift and give him the credit for what he has done. First woman vice president, first black woman on the Supreme Court, was a running mate with President Obama. 
giving us infrastructure, which is jobs. He, the uh, unemployment is down. We have strength in health care. He's put billions in student loan debt relief. He has done a good job, and it's time to recognize the job he's doing because we're not electing him to be a Jeopardy champion. Uh, we're not electing him to, to show us how great he can recall things that uh, may not make any difference in terms of how our lives are treated. The Republicans are not looking in that direction. The Republican evangelicals shifted the paradigm when they said, we are not electing mm. a priest. We're electing someone who's going to do the things that we want done. It's time to recognize the paradigm shift. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Representative Green. Feel well. We're wishing and praying for you to have an easy recovery. 